Once you've configured ModelSim to run your test bench, you're almost ready to launch it. You don't even need to fully compile your project. Just run Analysis and Synthesis by clicking the icon on the taskbar. You can also press Ctrl-K on Windows. When that's finished, go to the Tools tab, expand Run Simulation Tool, and select RTL Simulation. If you set it up properly, ModelSim will automatically compile your test bench and run your simulation. When it's finished, you'll see a code editor window pop up. Notice that the stop keyword triggered the end of the simulation. If you look below the code editor, you can see that there's another tab called Wave. This contains the results of the simulation in a waveform. I'm going to resize the windows a little bit so we can see more of the waveform. You can also see that by default, ModelSim displays the value of the registers and wires we instantiated in the test bench, which serve as the inputs and outputs to the system module. If we look at the corresponding waveforms for these registers and wires, they appear to be just straight lines, with no changes in value. That's because the default view is zoomed too far in. To fit the entire length of the waveform on the window, click on the window and press F. You can also press I and O to zoom in and out, respectively. Now we can see that every 10 nanoseconds, the inputs change and the output changes as a result. In this case, the inputs and outputs are only one bit, so they can only be 0 or 1. When the wave is high, the value is 1, and when the wave is low, the value is 0. If you're using multi-bit inputs and outputs, the waveform will simply output the value as text. Oftentimes, you'll want to observe other ports, registers, and wires in your design, in addition to the test bench inputs and outputs. Doing so is easy. The leftmost window contains the hierarchy of module instances in your design. You can see that System TV, the test bench, is our top level module, and within that is UUT, the instance of system we put in the test bench. Expanding that, we can see AND1 and Inverter1, which were instantiated in the system module. If we click on AND1, the Objects window displays the ports of the module. We might want to look at the OUT port in the simulation since that's an intermediate step in our design's calculations. To add the waveform, simply drag the port from the objects window into the gray portion of the wave window. To see the waveform, we need to restart the simulation. Click the Restart button up on the taskbar and click OK. Next, make sure that the simulation duration is long enough. Right now, it's 100 picoseconds, but we need at least 40 nanoseconds to complete it. I'll change this to 100 nanoseconds to give it enough time. Now just click the Run button on the taskbar. And now we can see the new waveform. Notice how the output of AND1 is 1 only when both the inputs are 1, and the output of System, which is the output from the inverter, is 0 when both inputs are 1. This is exactly what's supposed to happen, so we know the module was designed properly. If you wish to add a port or other internal signal in your design to the default list that gets tested when you run ModelSim, you can do so in the test bench. Just create another wire and connect it to the signal like this. The period syntax allows you to reference submodules and ports of the UUT module. If I close ModelSim and reload it, the output of AND1 will now be displayed automatically.